amis, c'est Mirdegam Village, j'espère que vous allez bien, je vous propose aujourd'hui Dragon's Dogma 2 qui fait suite au premier jeu sorti en 2012. Vous n'êtes pas obligé de connaître l'histoire du 1 pour faire ce deuxième volet, mais si le cœur vous en dit, le film du jeu est dispo en fiche en description. Dragon's Dogma 2 est édité et développé par Capcom, que je remercie pour la clé du jeu. Il est dispo aujourd'hui même, le 22 mars 2024, sur PC, PlayStation 5 et Xbox Series. Je vous propose le jeu sur sa version PC graphisme au max en 4K, 60 FPS avec du ray tracing et des LSS activé en mode qualité. On est donc comme pour le premier Dragon's Dogma sur un action RPG monde ouvert. Notre personnage est chargé de vaincre le dragon qui a volé son cœur avec la possibilité de recruter nos fameux pions alliés qui vont nous aider à affronter des créatures complètement titanesques. On peut leur monter dessus à la façon Shadow of the Colossus et on va découvrir cet univers riche en mystères qui niveau exploration m'a fortement fait penser à un certain Elden Ring. Vous savez, ce genre de jeu où tu n'es pas pris par la main. A noter que Dragon's Dogma 2 a une fin cachée et qui rallonge considérablement Considérablement la durée de vie du jeu. Bien évidemment, je vous la propose sur cette vidéo. Allez, finir par l'autre place au jeu. Je n'ai plus qu'à vous souhaiter un bon visionnage. Et si ça vous plaît, n'oubliez pas d'acheter le jeu. Bisous! On a guess, lend me your ears. Long as our Fevermont suffered without a true monarch to guide her and her people. Decades have passed since last His Majesty Erland sat atop the Draken throne. Long have we endured, yet it has not been for naught. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the Consul. At last, we may celebrate the coming of our rightful ruler. The return of the Sovereign. <laughs> My word! Such an inspiring visage! Your Majesty shall have my eternal hey, fealty! Your no Majesty, of how long I have waited this moment! Behold, before you sits the rightful inheritor of the Draken Throne, chosen by the dragon as its enemy. Behold or rejoice! Fortune has delivered us our savior at last! At last! Praise be, for only the Sovereign's guidance can lead us true. All hail the Sovereign! All hail! Let all present Pledge your allegiance to the Sovereign. Let us be united in the hope that our legions reign when they are end. Long live the Sovereign of Vermont! Long live the Sovereign! Arisen, thou who wouldst slay the dragon, if thou seekest to behold this world in its true aspect, abandon thy reason. Cast aside thine heart and thy life both. I ask thee to demonstrate thy will, for naught but thine ambition can alter the course of the rivers of fate.
like that look in your eyes. Tis queerly brazen for a pawn. Most of your kind have eyes blank as a cadaver's. Mayhap tis only natural seeing as how you rise from the dead. There's aught different about you, though. Could it be that you fear death just as we mortals do? Worry not, vessel. Three days here, and you'll be longing for death's sweet embrace. Come along, you feckless dullards. Do your injuries pain you? Pray, do not overexert yourself. This is no place for one of your ilk. Tis harsh beyond measure. Even we pawns are pushed to the brink. You ought not anger the overseer. Let us proceed to the site. What about this place makes My me bed calls and I shan't Ooh, resist. Like getting cut open. I suppose. Time for you to get to work. Job well done. Now the next step is to... What is this commotion? Perhaps we ought to investigate. Surely the work of a foul curse. 
Yes, but worry not. You need only believe in your own destiny, Marissa. Survive a fall from this height. Not even a pawn. Don't just stand there. Shoot it down. Keep your distance, or is it? Worry not for me. The brine may swallow me whole, but I will not perish. There is a stone not far from here, known as a rift stone. Pray, seek it out. If you're truly the arisen, then our paths will surely cross again. Oi! Are you all right? What happened here? A griffin appears one moment and falls the next. And now you stand before me. Was it you then? The one who was riding on its back? It is a wonder you survived. Accompany me to the stronghold. We'll treat your wounds and hear your story. Where exactly is this jail you say you escaped from anyway? I've never heard of such a place. There's certainly naught like that here in Burma. Could it be you were held in the neighboring country of Patal? Nay, I suppose that's unlikely. 
We've been estranged from Batal ever since the war. It is difficult to imagine any citizen of Vermont being sent there. Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. What is this? The pawns? They bend the knee to you so readily, but then... No. Surely you cannot be the Arisen. You seek the Riftstone, do you not? We can take you to it. Pray. Come this way. Before you stands a rift stone. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross Ur into this world. Pray, summon your pawn. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom you would have serve you. are known as crosses of the rift for we are able to connect to and traverse other realms beyond this one when we return it is our duty to use our experiences and the knowledge we have gained to aid you on your journey arisen from this day forth I shall serve you as your loyal pawn and all I learn beyond the rift will be at your disposal well I'll be a pawn summoning before my very eyes you truly are the arisen then strange I thought the Arisen was in the capital. Surely there's only meant to be one Arisen. Fie, this is all beyond my ken. The Watchhead would know what to do, I'm sure. Though, as luck would have it, he's away. I suppose we'll save any further questions till the Watchhead returns. You're free to do as you like afore then. What? You've no memories, you say? Mayhap you could make for Melv, then. It was set upon by the dragon not long ago. The Arisen is said to bear some deep connection to the dragon. Should you be Arisen, mayhap you'll recall aught of import there. Going out, are you? You sure that's a good idea? You seem rather unwell. You ought at least rest for the evening. There should be a spare bed in the lodgings yonder. Only don't go rushing off before you're ready. Take it from me. You're better off resting while you have the chance. The presence of a single mage can turn the tide of battle. Allow me to lend my magics to your cause. Very well. I'll guide you there directly. A guide is most welcome. Now we shan't lose our way. Behold the state of the village. It is a sorry sight indeed. The dragon truly is calamity incarnate. Mayhap a walk through the streets would help jog your memory. When the Arisen appears, so too does the dragon. It is an immutable truth of this world. That is most unfortunate.
But it doth not release thee from thy fate. Can you hear me, sir? Sir, stay with me. Thank goodness. How are you feeling? This is the second time I've watched over you like this. You do not remember? Then have you forgotten that you protected me from the dragon's flames? You withstood the fire in my stead and were well and truly charred. It was terrible. I had thought your life forfeit. I could not hear the beating of your heart. You hung on, and by some miracle, survived. I am sorry to hear that, though I cannot say I am surprised. Your burns could easily have killed you outright. A great many were bathed in the dragon's flames that day. All perished, save you. You must be special, indeed. How else could you have survived to return here? Has he come for you? We are to part so soon then. Mayhap you will visit me again someday. Till then, take care. Everson. Ah, excellent. You must be the one. You match my soldier's description. I'm glad I found you. The ruler of Vermont, currently convalescing in the capital, became arisen here in this very village. If you claim the same, then word must be borne to the capital. I dispatched a missive before coming here, though I doubt the matter can be settled without your presence. Would you be willing to accompany me to the capital? If you truly are arisen, 
you will be received with open arms. Oh, but forgive me. I scattered my soldiers in a bid to find you. I would not depart without them. We shall have to wait till they are reassembled. So this is where you've been. Come with me to the village entrance. The watchhead's waiting for you. Who might have the answers we need? Uh, shall we ask around? You really ought to have returned. Now Sir Gregor wants the word, eh? Hardly surprising. The Arisen's attentions are always in demand. A person of import, I take it. Very well. I will lead the way. A guide is most welcome. Now we shan't lose our way. So we finally arrived. I thought we'd never make it. Ah, you've returned. Good timing, too. I have questions for you. First and foremost, will you accompany me to the capital? My thanks. Are you ready to depart, or do you need some time to prepare? Good. Then let us be on our way. We've not counted a thief among our number for some time. We've no need of a thief if we are content to overwhelm our foes with sheer force. The Arisen is the lawful ruler of Vermin. So it has always been. To claim the title is to claim the throne. Yet not all claim the true. Our fools see tenders. They are not dealt with. Regardless, you will not be my trust. Hold here a moment. I shall bid them open the gate. Who's that you've brought with you, Watchhead, sir? An Arisen, by all appearances. An Arisen? Another pretender, you mean? I see the Sovereign's ascension has done little to stop such charlatans from plying their trade. Tis uncertain. This one commands the loyalty of the pawns. What? Impossible. You know as well as I do that there can be but one Arisen, and he's up in the palace. I'm well aware of how preposterous the idea is, thank you. However, as I do not believe it my place to rule on such a matter, I will make my report to the capital. If the claim is false, we will be rewarded handsomely for our trouble. If the claim is true, however, who can say? All's been arranged. Come, let us pass through the gate. An ox cart was meant to meet us. Yet, it is nowhere in sight. Aught may have befallen it. Best we press on. Is everyone all right? More marks of the dragon's fury. Its rampage must have weakened the earth here. What's this? We're trapped!
have my gratitude, sir. It would seem I misjudged you. I had taken you for another force arisen. Goodness knows we see a lot of them. Yet the value you showed in coming to our aid has dispelled such thoughts. Here, take this as a mark of my trust. Give it to one of the Sentinels stationed at the gates to the capital, and you'll be granted an audience with Captain Brandt. Well now! The road's blocked. The cart can't get through like this. A powerful current ought to set this rock to crumbling, if we could summon one. Ah, here's the cart now. Do you intend to join us? I was informed of your coming would be arisen. Captain Brandt, this individual summoned a pawn through a rift stone. Several witnesses can attest to it. Though I admit I had my doubts at first. It would seem this is no mere deceiver. This one's not a bad sort. Saved our hides on the way here. As decreed by the great will of our world, there can only be one arisen. That arisen now resides within the palace. Indeed. He is our sovereign and the rightful ruler of Vermont. It follows, therefore, that this ruffian before us is naught but a pretender. You must submit to questioning. If you value your life, you will not attempt to flee. I shall conduct the interrogation myself. Stand watch outside. I beg your forgiveness for my insolence, Your Majesty. If the Queen Regent had learned of your existence, I fear your life would have been in peril. I had no choice but to treat you as a pretender, lest my actions draw suspicion from watchful eyes. Then you have truly lost your memory? In that case, mayhap I ought to explain the situation before we proceed. You, and no other, are the Sovereign the only legitimate ruler of this kingdom. Some days passed, you confronted the dragon in the village of Melv, whereupon you became arisen. The people rejoiced, for our true liege had finally appeared, and in Vermont's long years of council rule. Yet, not all celebrated your coming.
Your arrival would have robbed the Queen Regent Deeser of everything. During the time of the previous consul, she acted as a queen in her own right, ruling the palace as she saw fit. And just after the consul's passing, when twas all but certain that her son would take his father's place. Word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. To Deesa, your majesty's very existence is naught but an obstacle to her own family's continued prosperity. The assassination of the Arisen is an impossible feat for mortal hands. Thus, Deesa chose to abduct your majesty while you recovered from your wounds, in order to rob you of your memory with a fell curse and sell you to Batal as a slave. Following that, she prepared a replacement to serve as the sovereign in your stead, a mere puppet. However, with your majesty returned, I have no intention of twiddling my thumbs as Deesa plays her games. I shall devise some plans to further our cause. Pray, visit me a night in the tavern that we might discuss them. Your Majesty, your timing is impeccable. I just thought to call for you. Tis not a matter for prying ears. Pray, let us speak out here. As I informed you when last we spoke, the palace is filled with the Queen Regent's sycophants. Should Deesa denounce your majesty as a false arisen, few would elect to doubt her. Yet if we are to prove your identity, I believe there is no occasion more suitable than the coronation. It was delayed so that the sovereign, that is, the false arisen, could convalesce in the palace, but the date has now been set. The central players in the court ought all be in attendance. It would be a fine opportunity to display your majesty's power. None would be able to deny that you are the true arisen then. There is a problem, however. Entry to such an event is limited to the chosen few. Only select members of the nobility and citizens who have contributed greatly to Vermont's continued prosperity will be granted entry. If your majesty is to be counted among them, you will need to attend to a number of tasks. Pray, allow me to summarize them for you. The citizenry have called upon my soldiers to cull monsters that plague the land. I dare say, it would be a fine contribution were you to accomplish these tasks unaided. What say you? Might I ask for your cooperation in this matter? I thank you. Your Majesty, there are three locales that have seen significant trouble of late. The first is Trevo Mine, to the northwest. We've had reports of goblins swarming in great numbers. Next is Half Village, west of Burnworth. I believe soldiers have already been dispatched to call an infestation of Saurians there. Finally, there is a call for someone to locate a group of soldiers tasked with delivering freight. They were last seen crossing the second bridge on the eastern edge of Vermin. Ho! Oh, you've come to a dangerous place. Scaly beasts make this their den. We've been dispatched to cull them. A small force ventured inside, though I've seen neither hide nor hair of them since. Seems the battle is hard won. I'll not stop you if you wish to explore, but don't look for my aid if aught goes awry. It was a surprise to find someone living out here and an old man at that. I wonder what so impels him to set out to sea. Curious, isn't it? 
Perhaps we will understand more in time. You come to save us. Forgive me. I cannot seem to walk of my own accord just now. Would you aid me in reaching the entrance? Shall I lead you to the location nearest here, Arisen? The soldiers delivering freight were last espied near Vermin's oh, eastern edge. I'm saved. You have my gratitude, friend. Were it not for your aid, I'd have died a dog's death. You went in there to save my fellow soldiers. I underestimated you, friend. I shall send word of your deeds to the captain. You've done well this day. I thank you. We'll see to the rest of this mess. You've done a fine job culling those monsters, your majesty. Tis common knowledge among the people that t'was you who delivered them from danger. The number of those who seek out this tavern in the hope of an audience with the Arisen grows by the day. Should you continue to display such valor, the day will soon come when Disa can no longer deny your presence. And ere it slips my mind. Pray, take this. Tis a symbol of my own gratitude. You will need to infiltrate the palace to gather evidence of Disa's misdeeds. I hesitate to ask something so dangerous of you, yet I fear we have few other options. I have attempted to do the same through my own channels before now, though I have yet to uncover so much as a whisper of her plots. Would that I could undertake the task myself, but my station prohibits me from reckless action. What say you, your majesty? Might I ask this task of you? I shall ensure that the door to the Queen Regent's office is open between midnight and dawn. Pray use that time to conduct your investigation. You are the Arisen, yes? The captain gave me your description. Follow me! you move along. Should one of the other guards spy you, I will be forced to play my part. Pray be cautious, your majesty. Who's there? Pray, keep your voice low. It wouldn't be good for either of us if someone were summoned to come check on me. Could it be that you have come to bring Mother's schemes to light? Aye, Disa is my mother. Pray forgive me for not telling you sooner. It was never my intent to deceive you. I simply feared that if I spoke the truth, none would wish to involve themselves with me. 
But that is no longer a concern. It is clear that we are allied in purpose. My word, you mean to say that you are the true Arisen? That the Sovereign currently residing in the palace is a pretender? Could Mother have had a hand in that as well? Regent Kin Sven appears to be missing from his chambers. Have you seen him? Me? No, sir. Then start searching, you fool. Should aught befall the Regent Kin, tis us who'll answer to her grace. Forgive me. My absence seems to have made this rather more difficult for us. You ought leave the palace at once. This room turned up little of interest, but I've a mind to look into this further. I shall send word to Captain Brandt if I discover aught you should know. I'll head out first and speak with the Sentinels. Use that opportunity to make good your escape. I couldn't sleep. I thought a strong... How fared your mission? Was there aught suspicious to be found in the Queen Regent's office? This scrap. Twas part of a letter. And from Batal, no less. This alone can prove little, but tis clear that Deezer's schemes run deep. To think, Deezer's actions have weighed even on the mind of her own son. Tis a surprise. But a welcome one. Deezer is here, the doting mother before the Regent King. If Regent King Sven is willing to aid us by drawing Deezer's focus, we may be able to gain here more useful information. You have done well, Your Majesty. Though I am limited in the aid I am able to offer, I bid you take this. I bear word from Regent Ken Sven, Your Majesty. He espied the delivery of a suspicious package to a man named Allard. A minister who happens to be one of the Queen Regent's staunchest and most powerful allies in the palace. From the pains he took to remain on scene, it is plain that Allard wished this delivery kept away from prying eyes. That alone is reason to suspect a connection to Deezer's schemes. We must get to the bottom of it. The Regent Kin intends to call Allard to his chambers come nightfall. He bids you to use this opportunity to search the Minister's chambers and see if there's aught to be learned. What say you, Your Majesty? Are you willing to undertake this task? I shall ensure that the door to the Minister's chambers is open between midnight and dawn. Pray, use that time to infiltrate and uncover aught worthy of suspicion. Business could be so pressing that I must be summoned at this late hour. I would not presume to know, my lord. However, it must be a highly sensitive matter for the Regent Kin to request a private audience. Oh, perhaps the boy has finally grown wise to the benefits my favor can bring. He might just be his mother's puppet, but at least he knows what's good for him. M my lord, if someone were to overhear... Oh, unring your hands, you fool! As if anyone in this palace would dare say a word against me. Now, if Wilhelmina calls, tell her to await me in my chambers. I will return presently. none more important than this. I speak of the ascension of the Sovereign. Indeed. But that, Your Grace, would be better discussed in the presence of your mother. Well, well. Yours isn't a face I'm accustomed to seeing around the palace. How did you get in here? Oi! Who 
Who goes there? Who's there? Tut, tut. Now, this just won't do. How's a lady supposed to work with all these interruptions? Oh, it is you, Lady Wilhelmina. Mm-hmm. Do excuse us. We thought to enjoy a little fresh air. Though, we had hoped for slightly more privacy, if you catch my meaning. Apologies, my lady. But might I ask the name of your companion? Are you sure it would be wise? Such knowledge has been known to cost a man his head. Ah, uh, understood, my lady. If anyone asks, I shall say I saw naught. Hmm. A narrow escape. You should count yourself lucky that he was so easily flustered. I don't appreciate having my motives questioned. I did as I saw fit. Need I say more? Still, you are welcome to come calling, should the fancy take you, and should you have the gold for it. I know this sigil well. Tis the crest of the neighboring country of Batal, a land with which Vermin has no official dealings at present. Let me see. It reads, true to our word, we offer you the power of the Godsway. Pray make haste in securing Melv, that all might be made ready ere our plans are set in motion. A meager clue, to be certain. Though, tis clear that the Queen Regent conspires with Batal. This does not bode well at all. Though the political situation is stable at present, much blood has been spilt between Vermund and his neighbor in the past. I fear such a partnership would only portend the drawing of more. At any rate, to see our search has led us to only more questions. Chief among them, what is meant by securing Melv and this God's way? I will investigate these matters as best I can. In the interim, Your Majesty, should you have time to spare, might you make for Melv? Only once we have gleaned a fragment of the Queen Regent's plot, can we begin to thwart it? As a reward for your majesty's efforts, you have been invited to attend the coronation. To it seem, congratulations are in order. You will, of course, require raiment befitting of the occasion. I would ask that your majesty return once you've procured such attire. your will. Could it be that the gods sway? We must quit this place, your majesty. I fear our plans may fall to law. Let us return to the tavern. False sovereign commanded the pawns at the coronation, proving his own powers arisen. According to Regent King Sven, the pretender was wearing some sort of lavish necklace at the time. I imagine this artifact is the god's way mentioned in that letter. A chance it is a tool that grants power akin to that of the true arisen. To do alas, unless we find some way to unmake this god's way's power, proving your majesty's legitimacy shall be difficult indeed. Pray, allow me time to search for a way forward. I shall inform your majesty when I have prepared a plan of action. 
Never could I have imagined such an outcome. What manner of artifact is this God's sway? I suppose it is pointless to ponder. Let us await the results of Captain Brandt's investigation. I quite agree. Your Majesty, regarding the matter of the God's way, I fear there is naught to be done, save for your Majesty to venture to Batal, where you might uncover the false sovereign's secrets directly. The sigil upon that letter from some days past bore the crest of the Batali Palace. Surely there's ought to be found therein. Yet official dealings twixt Batal and Brumund are suspended. Passing through their fortress will prove a difficult task. With such hindrances in mind, I thought to prepare this. Pray, take it. Few may pass through Batal's fortress, save Beastron merchants. With some coin, I was able to convince one such merchant to grant us that entry permit. It ought guaranteed passage through the border checkpoint, but alas, tis intended for a Beastron. You shall have to act the part, but as to how that should be done, I am shamed to say I do not know. It will depend upon your majesty's ingenuity. Tis a bit far. Perhaps we might employ the services of an ox cart? Master, do bear in mind that a fairy stone can shorten a long day's journey into a single instant. I quite agree. A merchant, eh? Have you an entry permit? Hold a moment. That cart has priority. Lord Phasus is come! Open the gates! Seek to enter Batal, I presume? I'll have to check your permit. Oi! This isn't yours! Do you take me for a fool? Present your own permit, or I'll have you thrown in jail! So, you seek to enter Batal, I presume? I'll have to check your permit. Go on through. Now, what might that be? We ought to take a closer look. So, after breaking free of the chains of slavery, that once bound you to this land, you return of your own volition. This is good. I am relieved to see that you are fulfilling your charge. Now, it would be advantageous for you and your crew to visit the Rockmaster's Borough in Bakbatal. Methinks it is where you will find that which you seek. Shall we do as that personage suggested, and make for the Rock Mouse's burrow? Pray, allow me to show you the way. We're in your hands, sir. Much obliged. Well met. Does that make you... the Arisen? Be at ease. I bear you no ill will. My name is Manella, and I have the honor of serving as a go-between twixt Her Majesty and the Gar. Come, let me buy you a drink. We've much to discuss, and I don't fancy standing round all the while. Shall we make for the tavern? The people of Batal view pawns with great prejudice. They're even forbidden from setting foot in the capital. 
Her Majesty, Empress Nadinya, has long been troubled by this custom, but a practice so ancient isn't easily overturned. Many are unhappy about the existence of this tavern, even though it lies outside the capital, simply because it was established as a place for pawns to gather. I know not what manner of person you are, but if you would aid me in my efforts to make the people of Batal more accepting of pawns, I would be glad to offer you a residence permit. It is a bargain more than fair, for those who hold such permits may remain in Bak Batal without having their activities questioned. What say you? Glad I am to hear it. Take this, then. Simply show it to one of the sentries and you'll be granted entry to the capital. Oh, and if you encounter any troubled Batali along the way, I bid you assist them. They are harsh in their persecution of the pawns, but were they to be aided by the targets of their ire, mayhap a few stubborn hearts would soften. A simple plan, I know, but is the only one available, or so it seems to me. I bid you good fortune, Sir Arisen. Who are you? Uh, no, never mind, it is of little import. I'm searching for blue crystal shards. Find any, and I'll pay you handsomely. The bigger they are, the higher your reward will be. Well, have you found any blue crystal shards? Is that all? Tiny fragments such as these aren't nearly good enough. Still, I expect I'll find a use for them here. Take your coin and be gone. Tis a god's sway. Well, to be precise, the crystalline substance from which tis made. By refining such crystals, anyone can attain the power of the Arisen. The power to command pawns. That, however, small fragments are meaningless. They cannot contend with the Arisen's power, you see. Speaking of which, should you find any large fragments, bring them to me, won't you? Though that might be difficult. We've scoured this area quite thoroughly, I should think. Tis possible larger shards may have been mistaken for jewels and carried off by scavengers or collectors or some such. Mayhap one such as the Oracle or the Dragonforged would be able to aid you in locating them. I can tell you no more than that.
I knew you would come, a risen one. You seek answers, and you shall have them, if tis within my power to know them. Loath as I am to admit it, I know little of the artifact of which you speak, though I shall tell you aught I can. I sense a land soaked in warmth, a warmth akin to your own arisen, to that of the power of the life you possess. Yet it now lies many fathoms below the surface of the sea, in a place unreachable by mortal hands. Though it is strange, for I sense also that this warmth grows ere near. Twould seem a path will be open to you in time, allowing you to venture into the heart of this warmth so like your own. Perhaps he who was Dragonforged can tell you more. Seek him out in Harv Village, if you would learn from him. That went as well as we might have hoped. Let us cast our eyes about and analyze the situation. About time you came along. I have a special tale to share with you today. Or so I'd like to say, but it is getting rather late. Best spend the night. We can talk again come more. Ah, good. You're awake. Look to the sea, my friend. Hard to resist setting out in one's boat with fair skies like these, eh? <laughs> now. I've told you about the sunken temple in the middle of the sea, haven't I? I am quite sure I mentioned it. But I ne'er spoke of the man who resides there. He was such a worthy ruler in life that his armies safeguard him even in death. As he himself would have it, he was once entrusted with the task of watching over this world from the heavens above. Yet he tired of his duty and abandoned his perch in the sky in favor of founding a small kingdom on the ground. Alas, though he was a just and goodly ruler, there is not a single person alive who remembers his name. Ooh, it sounds unfortunate, but if you ask me, it is all a matter of perspective. It can be a blessing to forget, and to be forgotten. I should know. In all my long years, I've never forgotten a single thing. I remember everything, every little detail. Would that I could forget some of it. <laughs> a lie it may seem, but a lie it is not. I speak only the truth, as you well know. Come see me again, if it pleases you. I've tales of plenty to share. Friend, I'd ne'er seen the like. I'd not known there were ruins in the depths of this cavern till the path appeared. Twas magic, methinks. I should have liked to investigate if the place hadn't been crawling with monsters. I'll be needing sturdier arms than these afore I head back in there, I fear. 
At any rate, I'd best report this discovery to my commander. I only pray North Grave shall come of it. Another comes seeking to inter me. Yet your wicked schemes will avail you not, watching one. Time and again have you sent unto me your minions. Yet repel them I have, and so I shall anew, till I might claim the true world as mine own. Why do you Draw your blade. <laughs> this battle shall be o'er before it has even begun. You seek not my death. Hmm. Then you are not of the watching one. I am Rothas, founder of the kingdom of Vermund. <laughs> And you appear to be a reason. Tell me your reason for coming here. God's sway. Hmm. Speak you of those trinkets conjured by the wizards of Batal. Even from these depths, I have beheld the Batali scuttling about. Gathering their fragments. It is a baleful, maddening act to transmute the fractured souls of Arisen into such frivolous baubles. Aye, that which you seek is a soul much like your own. Yet rarely will you find one intact. For splinters are all the remain of those pitiful arisen who were bade come here by the Watching One to end me. The flesh may rot, the soul fragment, yet power, power endures. And would seem the Batali seek to augment this power through their perverted arts. Though to what nefarious end, I know not. Yet tis folly, the frolicking of children. Such a trinket could ne'er hope to fell the dragon, let alone the watching one. I know little of your intent. I sense in you a powerful will. A will that urges you towards fulfillment of some great feat. I shall grant you this blade. It too is the soul of an arisen. Mine own, in fact. Refined in purest dragon blood. Alas. The ages have taken their toll. Tis as withered as mine own flesh. Yet, mayhap, the Batali's profane magics would be capable of drawing forth its late potency. If that is what you seek, Arisen, then go on to their stronghold. I believe tis there you shall find the means to achieve it.
this is all wrong. What use are pitiful fragments such as these? Well, what we have achieved is sufficient to sway the pawns. But when the time comes to fell the dragon, I fear it may not be enough. Lord Phasus insists we shall succeed, and yet... Why? Tis an arisens! This... This is incredible! I've never seen such a luster! But why do you possess such a thing? Where did you obtain it? No. Never mind. Tis of no consequence. All that matters is this. With this alone, I shall be able to craft a superior godsway, the finest of all created to date. I must make haste that I might deliver it to Lord Phasus even a moment sooner. But wait, no. I have not the worm's life crystals to restore it. Concern it all! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, don't be ridiculous! Do you even understand what you are offering? Worm's life crystals can only be obtained from drakes. But I suppose I am in no position to decline, even if tis a fool's errand. Lord Phasus is satisfied with the God's way as tis, you see. And as I can expect no support from him, you can expect little aid from me. Though, I suppose twouldn't do to send you away entirely empty-handed. Feel free to take what you require from the laboratory. Now, as I've said, Worm's Life Crystals can only be obtained from drakes and their ilk. Seek one out and fell it, if tis within your power. All the better if it happens to be a lesser dragon. You would be solving two of my problems, then. Gathering materials makes for dull work indeed. It is clear to me that my fate is to aid you. Ah, but which dragon do you seek? The dragon that stole your heart shall appear before you when the time is come. If instead you seek the so-called lesser dragon, you would do well to pay a visit to Dragon's Breath Tower. If tis yet another dragon you seek, then perhaps you ought to search for it yourself. Your feet will guide you no less ably than any revelation on my part. Felling drakes and harvesting worms like crystals is just the sort of feat one would expect of you, Master. Uh, shall we? I, I have a rough idea of where our destination lies. Uh, shall I show you there, Master? A guide is most welcome. Now we shan't lose our way. Come chasing us as well, have you? Aye. Rumors abound of the Shrine of Eld in this domain. Could be hiding all manner of priceless treasures, couldn't it? And if monsters happen to be guarding it, I shan't be afeard. Nay, I'll strike them down with tooth and claw. That's how I plan to make an...
Hail Arisen. Allow me to join you in this trial. Pray, follow me. This gloom has an eerie cast. That looks promising. Any ideas? This is a hot goblin! It is weak to lightning strike! We're here, Master. Do not give up hope. Help will come. Thank you, Arisen. Minded creature by all appearances. You can easily read the message of our attack. You are in need of healing. Allow me. Wait a moment. Fast and 
I am confident we shall speak. Yet, however many I call, the emptiness refuses to fill. For these beasts are but crude imitations of the dragon true. Sigurd, you're the current arisen, aren't you? I pray you do not walk the same path as I have. It is a style all my own. A patchwork of techniques honed for the sole purpose of slaying the dragon. As a matter of fact, Master, your abilities as a mystic spirit never get to You've returned. Have you obtained any worm's life crystals? You have. Incredible! That is no small feat. I must admit, I had not thought you much chance of success. Yet here you are. And this, this is precisely what I require to complete my work. I shall delay. Come by again tomorrow, by then. I will have produced a god's sway of unparalleled quality. Oh, it is finished. The result is even more sublime than I'd hoped. <laughs> I must deliver it to Lord Phasus at once. Though, mayhap. Now, I cannot leave this in your hands. I may not be fleet of foot, but only I can do this. <laughs> Wait, I... I've changed my mind. You take it. Deliver the blade to Lord Faces. You ought reach him in time. Go now. Make haste for Moonglint Tower. There your journey will come to an end. One way or another.
I'll go and open the chest. I should like to know its purpose. Where is it headed? I cannot but fear it will bring ruin wherever it treads. Retreat soon. I fear we are all lost. We all press on, my lord. Mine's not the stone puppets, then. We move. It arose from the sea. What could have summoned it? There are plenty of places our feet might find purchase on its hulking frame. And, as fortune would have it, cliffs extend on either side. Shall we try jumping down on it from on high? Understood. Look out, Dorin! 
No few have been harmed, yet this ordeal is far from over. Let us act swiftly, that we might prevent further losses. We shall halt it together. and our quarry shall fall. chances against future adversaries. would seem the stone puppet has stopped. Have the wounded been tended to? Yes, my lord. Good. I trust you are prepared, Sovereign of Vermon. W will it really be all right? I I'm not about to be charred, am I? Fear not. You are in no danger. Dragon shall be under my control when it appears. Come, let us press onward.
Danger might lurk anywhere. Wear every shadow and mind the ceiling. Remain alert, and naught shall catch us by surprise. Tis some manner of device. Shall we activate it, Arisen? We pawns will be ready to respond, whatever the outcome. That I trust. At last, we may confront the pretender of your time. A man has made his peace. Watch as this world's hollow and fruitless order is remade by my hand. Existence determines all. Arisen. 
Hast thou summoned the resolution to face me? Then answer me this. Why dost thou fight? Is it to reclaim thy flesh, thy stolen heart? Or is it to reclaim thy throne? I offer thee a choice. Grant unto me this life in my claws, and be gone from this place. Or stand and fight. Pity will arisen. The time for thou to make thy choice is come. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. Go, and thou shalt live to claim thy coveted throne. Fight and thy life is forfeit. Thou wilt face the dragon's dogma.
Why do you have to sue me over some? You have fulfilled your charge, and you're not satisfied. Seek you greater status. Perhaps to rule the world in time. Desire, you need merely spy out the path. The choice is thine, Risen. By thy will alone can the course of the winners of fate be altered. You would still resist your fate. Understand you the folly of such a decision. Even the beating of your reclaimed heart was born of the great will of this world. Yet you would abandon it. Everything in this world, all that you have come to know as reality, is the creation of the great will. Should that will be lost, no mortal being can survive. However, if regret yet assails your spirit, then perhaps you should reaffirm your choice. Witness with your own eyes, or through the eyes of another, fate of this world. Thou wishest to dismantle the world's will just as I do. Yet dost thou know what awaiteth the world should it meet such a fate? Would become a fleeting fragile Thing, bereft of the cycle, Lord would be born into its same chaos, great and terrible. Surviving its will, no simple matter. Yet, if the will is set upon the Turn back. Leave now, while you can. You have strayed, Arisen. And for what? Lest you forget. You have a world where you belong. There, you are to fell the great evil in your path and rule the people as their sovereign. For that is who you are. And it is my wish that you should live out that life of purpose. The time has come for you to return. Go. My children shall see you there safely. Let us go home. Together. To a world under your rightful rule. To a world all your own. This 
is your will. Then behold, a world unmerciful, but left with a benevolent hand. This is your world, the world to which you longed to return. Alas, if only you had chosen to become sovereign. At the end of your travails, you could have ruled over these lands in perpetual peace. Yet that world of limitless possibilities has ended. You stand now upon its remains, the vestiges of a world that could have been so much more. Innumerable wills have served to deliver this world from extinction time and time again. You alone have refused to carry out that great purpose. What you see before you is the consequence of your apathy. Behold. Is nowhere to be seen, Master. But where would a pawn possibly go, leaving their own master behind? Perhaps this too is Lord Phaser's doing. We ought to go and speak with him at the Forbidden Magic Research Lab. Ah, arisen. You yet live. I suspected as much, given that your pawn still remains. One might hypothesize that your pawn is sustained by your vital essence. Or perhaps something more. In any case, we ought to apprise one another of the situation. Is there aught you would know? Ah, yes. I trust it has not escaped your notice that the end of days is upon us. After you vanished, together with the Red Dragon, the seas rose to swallow the skies. Twas perhaps a month from that evil day when a new calamity befell us. A host of dragons descended from the skies and fell upon the land with fang and claw. Luz the Oracle called upon me ere you arrived. 
As she tells it, Melv and its environs have already fallen prey to the beasts. Tis surely only a matter of time before the rest of the kingdom follows suit. I found the poor creature collapsed by the wayside near Batal. Recognizing your pawn, I decided to take the ailing thing into my custody. I thought it possible that the Arisen's pawn might hold the key to making sense of all this madness. Alas, try what I might, your pawn will not wake. Mayhap you will succeed where I could not. The pawn is, after all, yours to command. In your absence, I had hoped your pawn might yield me some information. But as you have returned, I would hear the truth from your lips. Tell me, Arisen, what became of you this past month? So, following your plunge into the sea on the dragon's back, some mysterious presence reached out to you. Could that have been the world forged? Yet why would such a being linger in those fathomless depths? I can only speculate. And speculate I shall. This ought to prove a fruitful avenue of investigation. For that I thank you. Now, if you can find a way to end this interminable slumber, your pawn is, of course, free to rejoin you. Oh, Master. How long I've slept? Far too long, it seems. But worry not. Now that I am awake, I shall follow wherever you lead. The month I spent with Lord Phasus was a queer experience indeed. Though my mind was perpetually unclear, I always felt your presence, Master. Full glad I am that we have been reunited. What has become of the world? Would that there were someone who could explain this madness. Come to think of it, did not Sir Rathaeus speak of releasing the world from its bonds in the seafloor shrine? If this is indeed the world unbound, then perhaps we ought to seek out his wisdom. Do I feel the probing gaze of the Watching One? Is this your doing, newest of the Arisen? I am he who brought the dragon low, and o'er its bones raised the proud kingdom of Vermin. Despite the magnitude of my feet, I was dissatisfied and sought ere greater heights. Till at last, I ruled the world entire. Thus did I come to know of the Watching One. The being by whose many eyes and ears no one or thing in this world goes unobserved. As to the purpose with which they watch, I know not. Yet I did divine one thing. This world has lain neath the Watching One's unwavering gaze ere the dawn of its history. I despaired of this discovery, for, if all is but a stage, did that not render my hard-won glories, my throne astride the world, mere spectacles for the all-seeing eye to watch? I... And I, the fool, exulting in my wooden crown. Do you understand, newest of the Arisen? This is why I sought to fell the Watching One. Alas, though I cut down all who seemed false, be they man or woman, human or beastly, young or old, I did not succeed. Indeed, my efforts led only to my own ruin. I was dubbed the Mad Sovereign, 
and by the hand of the new arisen, consigned to this place forevermore. Yes, I can only assume that you have achieved what I could not. How else to explain the changes I sense in the world? Ah, oh, what bitter gall that I cannot witness the outcome for myself. Falter not, newest of the arisen, for your path is just. And fading spirit though I am, I may yet summon those who can be of aid to you. I see you have returned, arisen one. The Mad Sovereign has called, and so we answer. If you would save the people of this world from ruin, lead them here. For this place may chance to escape the coming destruction. Making this a place of refuge is a splendid idea. I see it in your eyes. You are ready to learn. And so I shall teach you a technique. Use it well. We've arrived well enough. Where to next? Oh, what is this? You've pushed your luck too far. I'll not take that from you. Pray calm yourselves, good people. I will have none of this squabbling. Sir Manella, you don't understand. This scoundrel's the one who started it. No, you don't understand. This is no time for the people of Batal to be quarrelling amongst themselves. We shan't weather this calamity, unless we can recall our common purpose and unite our efforts towards it. Ah, Sir Arisen. You are returned, I see. With the world in such disarray, I could not stand to be away from my homeland. Thus did I return, to render what aid I may. I maintain order as best I can. But for every fire I extinguish, it seems three more are incited behind my back. But enough of my woes. What brings you here? You wish us to evacuate? Mayhap the idea merits some thought. After all, if we sit on our haunches, it is likely only a matter of time before we share the fate of Mel. Alas. The people of Batal are far from united in purpose at present. Should we proceed, unheeding of their divisions, I fear that our efforts would come undone ere long. With every soul at their wit's end, conflict is like to spark at the slightest provocation. As such, before we take any measures, I would have you walk amongst the people, Sir Arisen. Behold their plight with your own eyes. And should you encounter any discord, Pray do aught you can to resolve the people's quarrels and assuage their fears. Such efforts will doubtless allow the evacuation to proceed all the more smoothly. As for me, my work here is far from done. Let us part ways for now, and reconvene when you have accomplished all you can. Flared tempers are understandable given the circumstances. Let us aid in mediating the quarrels arising in Bagpatal. You're just riding on your father's coattails! You slander my honor, sir! I demand a duel. This is no business of yours. Be gone! Now, now, Nara, let's not be too hasty. If we are to duel, we ought to have a witness. Otherwise, who's to say the victor fought with honor? Aye, true enough. Without a witness, either of us could simply kill the other, then disavow the use of any underhandedness. Well, sir, what say you? Will you watch over us while I take this scoundrel to task? This knave dared to slight my honor. He said my swordsmanship was hardly fit to wound a training dummy. The bloody nerve of him. <laughs> and I'd say it again. It was your dear father's patronage that made you a sentinel, not your own skill. You have my gratitude, sir. Let us delay no further. Come, Scario, prepare yourself. Have at!
spots you. I, I admit it. I underestimated your skill. The loss is mine. Nay. It was I who underestimated you. You'd thought to score an easy victory. But you fought fair and capably. We owe you a debt, sir. It is on your account that we've seen some sense. Were it not for your timely appearance, I'd wager this nonsense might have cost one of us their life. Indeed. Better to hone our respective skills than take up arms against petty slights, I say. I've had well enough of your nitpicking. I reckon the world would be better off without you! <gasps> Oi, you! Don't go poking your nose in our business. This is between us. Aye, leave off or we'll make you! Have you lost a bloody mind? Reckon you could just cut us down in the streets? What's the matter with you? Eh? Fine, fine. We'll set our squabble aside for today, so bother us no more. Ah, Sir Arisen. In less pressing circumstances, I would take issue with your methods. But I cannot deny your efficacy. The people of Batal are beginning to see that they must stand together if they are to survive this calamity. We shall see the fruits of your labors when the time comes to evacuate. At the very least, we need not expect too much opposition to the announcement. Pray return to Empress Nadinia and apprise her of your doings. I must remain here to ensure no further squabbles arise. Heavens only know how many lives you have saved this day. I hope you'll accept this humble reward for your efforts. What say we report back to Empress Nadinia? Her Majesty ought be willing to commence the evacuation now. By your leave. The sky fall, I trust. I doubt you could have missed it. And wherever the sky falls, a dragon soon appears to lay waste to the land. Or so I had assumed, after what befell Melv. Yet aught here appears to be different. Has our ruin been forestalled, or merely postponed? I must examine that creature. It may well be the key to unraveling the origins of this cataclysm. I can see where we need to go, but some fell power is blocking our way. Many paths are close to us now. Confound this obstruction. I suppose I ought to have expected this. Answers were ne'er so easily won. Monsters. Summoned by that beast, no doubt.
principles unproven are as dust on the wind. forward. Up we go. The month I spent with Lord Phasus was a queer experience indeed. I was conscious of nothing. Nothing that is save your presence. Naught can be achieved without <laughs> There are so many of them. Better we cut down only those we must to proceed. This cannot continue. Follow me. Fell powers are twice as terrible in the flesh. There it is! The dragon at the heart of all this destruction! from it. Why did you destroy it? The secrets we might have learned. <sighs> Never mind. You've your charge, it is true, and the fiends appear to be falling back. But I trust you won't object if I take a sample of its remains. After all, your role is to save this world, and mine is to pursue its secrets. Go, do what you must. I will remain here and continue my work. Someday soon, I will lay bare the truth of this world. And on that day, I will slip the yoke of this broken order that rules us all. Her Majesty has begun her supplications. None may see her ere they conclude. Stay your hand, Vera. This one may pass. Come hither. We would speak with you. One of our ministers informs us that you have been espied in the city, resolving the people's troubles. You have our gratitude for your efforts, which have doubtless bettered the fate of this nation and its citizenry. Your journey continues, does it not? 
We wish you good fortune on your travels, wheresoever they may take you. Pray excuse the interruption, your majesty, but I fear time is upon us. I would see you prepared for the road ahead. Indeed. Forgive us, but we must take our leave. Farewell. Back Batal and the rest town are now safely evacuated. I am certain we can rely upon Sir Manella to keep the peace. Outstanding. The Batali Knights use this place to train. You're not one of us, so I cannot imagine you've any business being here. Pray, leave us in peace. Oh? You believe we ought to evacuate? Well, you traveled far indeed to deliver these tidings. Farther, I dare say, than anyone would go for the sake of an idle jest. Hmm. If we must leave, we shall have to begin preparations at once. But I think we're a bit short on hands to attend to all that must be done. In fact, there's a rather delicate matter that I could use some help with. A blacksmith and his wife dwell on the encampment outskirts. Might you escort them here, so that they can join the evacuation? The smith, Gustava, is a man of good sense. But as for his wife... Well, suffice to say, Cleuna has always been a contentious sort. She'd have naught to do with us, given the choice, and isn't likely to take kindly to the arrival of any of my knights on her doorstep. I can only hope that she will be more willing to listen to you, a third party, as it were. And while you're taking care of that, I will see to it that the incumbent is made ready to depart with all due haste. The creature is defeated. I was hoping this will be enough to forestall the Red Cloud's advance for a while. A treasure chest. Shall we see if we can't make our way over to it? A forgotten rift stone we've not discovered lies nearby. It is this way, as I recall from my last sojourn beyond the rift. I? What do you want? My husband and I are simple folk. 
In these perilous times, all we ask is to be left alone. Pray leave us be, sir. I'm sorry. You'd have us evacuate with the encampment? Why, we could never. Come what may, this place is our home. No, no. I'll hear none of that. Stranger or no, our guests came all the way out here just to warn us. That's the mark of a good sort, and I trust my gut. This one shan't steer us wrong. But, Ghost Offer, what of your back? Bah! I can manage a little walking. Besides, I'd rather hike a thousand leagues on two bloody stumps than lose you, my dear. Oh, Ghost Offer, how can I say no to that? Oof! Confirm this back of mine! So? Very well, sir. We shall join you. Would you be so kind as to escort us to our destination? Methinks there are rare materials to be found hereabouts. Well spotted. Shall we see what we can find? ladder looks sturdy enough to climb. We ought to put it to good use. Well, here we are. How long before the evacuation begins, I wonder? Would you find Serenesto and tell him we've arrived? Let him know that we'll wait here till the time comes. Sir, I implore you to reconsider. Surely you can see that the situation is dire. How many times must I say it? I'll not be ordered about. Not by ye, not by anyone. Now bugger off and leave me alone. Ah, good. You're back. I'm afraid there's another matter for which I must beg your assistance. It concerns the fellow I was just speaking with. Sir Lamond, his name. The man's something of a regular at our hot springs. I sought him out to tell him of the evacuation, but he has flatly refused to join us. I must confess, I'm at a loss as to how I might convince him. Could I prevail upon you to try your hand? At this point, methinks anything I say will fall on deaf ears. Perhaps we might speak with this Sir Lamond. The evacuation effort stands to benefit from another pair of hands. I? What would you have made? <laughs> not this again. I'm here to live my life as I see fit. I'll not be ordered about by anyone, cuz. True enough, that lot can barely hold a blade between them. Still, I reckon they've their pride, as all knights do. Tis why don't ye do it, if ye're so worried for them? Oi, I heard out ye request. Kindly bugger off. And leave me in peace. The hour of our departure is almost a pot. We'll be slow going, no doubt. We have wounded whom we must accommodate. Yet, come what may, I swear to see them all to safe harbor.
compelled it, I cannot say. Go forth, Talos. May you strike down any dragon in your path. statue halted the clouds advance did the pawn within impel the statue to action during my time with Lord phases I found myself in a strange state of being I was conscious of nothing nothing that is save your presence master I cannot explain it my hapt was made possible by the bond we share Golem comes. I doubt ice will be of any use against it. Thank you. This place does not have long left, I fear. We ought to get to safety, though I have to wonder if anywhere is safe now. I'd gladly accompany you, believe me. But the others here? Well, suffice to say, they won't be able to join us. Follow me, you'll see what I mean. To think Talos would topple our foe! It is a jail of sorts, this place. A compound where we set captured pawns to work. They were supposed to be digging up old ruins or some such. I confess, I don't know all of the ins and outs of the operation. Underlings like myself were given orders and little else, you see. Well, here you have it. They've been like this for a month straight now. They refuse to leave. You might as well try talking to a wall. You have more luck. I know they don't die like we do, but it seems cruel to abandon them here, all the same. I never wanted to be here, you know, taking part in all of this. The enslavement of pawns doesn't sit well with me. I suppose that's why I can't bring myself to leave them behind. Either that, or the current state of the world helps to put things in perspective. At any rate, I've tried everything I can think of to get them out, but naught's done any good. The command came a month ago or more. We are to remain here, and so we remain. I implore you, Arisen. Take me with you. So they're staying here because they were ordered to remain. And they told you that, did they? Strange. I couldn't get a word out of them. I wonder why they saw fit to speak with you. But never mind that. More importantly, You've given me an inkling of the problem at hand. It was the Overseer's doing, methinks. When the world changed, that craven up and ran for his life. 
But on his way out, he used that artifact they call the God's Way to command the pawns to protect him. I expect that order of his is what the pawns were referring to. But why would they continue to obey when the man is long gone? Unless... Listen, friend. I have a thought. What say you have a look around and see what you can turn up? If the Overseer's command is indeed still in effect, it could be that he is lurking somewhere not far from here. Use that key to have a look around. It should open any doors you come across. Best keep your eyes peeled for the Overseer as well. I have a feeling he's still lurking about here somewhere. Clouds have already swallowed so much of this world. Panicking will avail us not. So the pawns were being held here by the power of this god's sway. Now they ought be free to make good their escape. Splendid. So, there was naught left of the overseer but bones, eh? I'll wager he thought to take the pawns with him to the grave. He always was a spiteful old goat. At any rate, I'm well grateful for your aid, friend. Now that the pawns are on their feet, methinks I can get them to safety. I only hope they'll heed my words as they have yours. But I'm not worried. I'll find a way to reach them in time, no doubt. My word! Isn't this the God's sway? With this, I'll be able to guide the pawns to the refuge without delay. Now there's no chance of any of them being left behind. Seems I've no end of things to thank you for, my friend. I appreciate all you've done here. I'll get the pawns to safety, don't you worry. With this, their evacuation is all but assured. God's ways are loathes of artifacts, but I suppose they have their uses.
creature is gone. Let us revel in the knowledge that this region has escaped its destruction. Back in Fernworth at last. What say we have a mug of ale at our favorite tavern while we're here? Tis a vast place. I wonder how many corners we have left to explore. Your Majesty. How glad I am to see you safe. Where have you been this past month? The end of the world. Are things truly so dire? Though, I am aware of the dragon attack on Melf. We received word that naught but a smoking ruin remains. Twas a tragedy, and I would not see it repeated. However, without a clear path, we and the guard shall be hard pressed to forestall the impending crisis. You would have me evacuate the city? I see. Mayhap twould be for the best. Ever since the fall of Mel, the citizens of Vernworth have lived in fear that their homes are next to be assailed. If there is safe harbor to be found elsewhere, I believe we have naught to lose by seeking sanctuary. But I doubt I could convince the people of this city to abandon their homes, however terrified they may be. Methinks your majesty would do better to ask this of the Regent King. After the false sovereign vanished and the world was altered, his grace has been the one keeping order here in Vermont. If the people will heed anyone, tis him. My sword could use some work. So you've come. I'm glad to see you. Captain Brandt has already apprised me of your proposal. A full-scale evacuation of the citizenry. Truth be told, I had reached the same conclusion. So long as we cower within these walls, we must live in fear of going the way of Melv. My ministers have approved the plans, and I have petitioned the encampment survivors and the Thieves' Guild for aid. The only remaining obstacle is my mother. She has set herself stubbornly against any such flight. I have tried to make her see reason, but of late she has taken to shutting herself in her chambers. However, I cannot bring myself to leave my own mother behind. If I cannot convince her, I mean to remain here and share in her fate. Now, there are a few matters I must attend to before we can evacuate. And we will require several ox carts to carry the sick and aged out of the city. Might I prevail upon you to petition the merchant at the ox cart station in the west of the city for their use? You may assure him that the Royal Treasury will foot any and all expenses. Queen Regent Deesa hardly leaves her chambers, and all her meals come back scarcely touched. Between you and me, I fear for her health. Have you come to claim my life, Arisen? Well, far be it from me to deny you. But I shall go to the grave with a smile on my lips, for I have no regrets. All I did, I did for my darling son. So do as you will. I have no intention of begging for mercy. Yes? This was in Mother's room. I did wonder where it had gotten off to. But why would she... Hmm. There's aught inside. Tis a... letter. I... Might you excuse me? I would speak with Mother. Mayhap there is hope of changing her mind yet. All she did, all the scheming, all the plots, was all for me, you see. So I... I cannot leave her to her fate.
real bow. Mother, I must beg your forgiveness. I believe that you desired to make me sovereign solely for your own benefit. Yet in truth, you sought to better the lot of our people. Ah, but I would have benefited. And handsomely at that. Besides, I cannot deny that I was proud. I wish to see my own son on the throne, and no other. Even so, I cannot help but feel that all of this could have been avoided, had I only been more attentive. If I had but better known your heart, I could have shared in your burdens. You would not have had to suffer alone, and perhaps together we could have walked a better path. Oh, Sven. Mother, I beg you, join the evacuation. You need not fall with this city. I would not see you take your crimes wholly on your own shoulders. That weight is as much mine to bear as tis yours. My son, you truly would make a fine and goodly ruler. Your kindness will save many lives. Of that I have no doubt. Be gone with you, ruffian. These carts are mine. I paid good gold for them. And if you think I'll surrender a single one, you'd best think again. I require the use of all of them to transport my wealth to safety. Be gone with- And if you think I'll surrender a single one, you'd best think again. I require the use of all of them to transport my wealth to safety. What are you doing? Put that away. No, spare me. I pray you. I fear for my life. Well, reckon he won't be coming back here in a hurry. As a matter of fact, I'd like to thank you for that. It didn't sit right, see? Having my wares claimed by some puffed-up minister trying to save his own skin. Anyhow, as long as I've got my gold, who takes the carts is no concern of mine. And if that craven comes crawling back, I'll tell him bandits took them. Minister Allard has fled, and good riddance. I doubt there ever was a more cravenly character in all Vermont. Ah. You've returned. How fares your procurement of those carts? You do? My thanks. That puts paid to the last of our preparations. I will inform the citizenry forthwith.
adventure is gone. Let us revel in the knowledge that this region has escaped its destruction. I see you do not relent. Your persistence is most intriguing. What is it that impels you, I wonder? Alas. Would that the world had not come to this. For I am certain that your tale would have been a glorious one. Yet, it was not to be. You need only cast your gaze upward to glimpse the futility of your defiance.
Tis clear to me now, Arisen. I am no longer a mere vessel. Your great will has imbued me with the lesser will of my own. Will is power. Tis the means to shape the world as one desires. to unfold. Yet, it seems I will not be there to watch it. Oh, 